Welcome back everybody. Today I'm in my wife's Jeep heading up the hill and this is why I'm in her Jeep. I don't want to run over all these rocks with my tires. But uh, no, actually the, the road going up is pretty pretty bad so I need a four wheel drive to get up the road. But uh, Here's a pile of rock. This has all been piled up here in the last two, three days by the uh, Forest Service moving it out from underneath this cliff and a couple of boulders came down. Um, I'd hate to have met that thing on the road doing 40 miles an hour. Little to say I think he would win. And here's the obligatory uh, waterfall shot. Got waterfalls all, the, all over the place now. Now yeah, here's the road I was talking about coming up. It's uh, pretty roached out. The stream decided to come down the road rather than to follow the stream bed. So you notice the, the lean on the hood of the, the Jeep here. It shows it's very unlevel. Lots of rocks washed into the road and most of the dirt washed off the road in some places. It really beats you to death trying to get up this road. These ruts don't look very deep on, on video, but uh, I'll tell you some of them are 8 inches to a foot deep. I got stuck here the other day, got the uh, trailer hitch of the Jeep hung up on a rock so I had to hook up to a boulder with a winch and pull myself out. Wound up pulling the boulder out of the ground too. Well here's the manzanita mine, you see it's covered up with mud. Fortunately this wall or the uh, door has kept the mud out. Let's take a look inside here. I'll uh, chuck a rock in here and you can see how deep the water is. It's full of water now, but there's no mud. Fortunately, getting the water out is a lot easier than having to dig all that out in mud. It takes months to dig it out if it were mud. But uh, going up to the upper Manzanita portal, there's this trench that was dug out by the um, by the rain. Uh, that's the upper portal, and the water flow comes off to the right, comes down the mountain, and has exposed this quartz vein here. This apparently is the quartz vein that they followed into the mountain. And uh, I'm going to sample that. That looks good. That looks like some good stuff. So we might uh, even dig it out and expose it down the hill some more. But uh, we're going to take some samples of it today and test them out and see if it's got any gold in it. The manufacturer of these hammers suggests that you not use it as a pick like this. But uh, they didn't say anything about not using it as a driving wedge. Yeah, that works out a lot better. I'm going to drive this thing down into the rock, pull on the handle, and it'll pull that rock right apart. Well, let's look here. That's some fine looking quartz there. The dark brown is what I'm supposed to be looking for. That's the uh, fluids that had the gold in it. Came up between the quartz layers. So we're going to pick through here and take some pieces. Take them down to the lab and put them on the slab and see what we got going. Here's what was under the rock. is dark material. This should be pretty rich stuff. I know it has sulfides in it. This is a this mine is known for having sulfides. But uh, maybe most of them on this part of the vein have uh, have deteriorated and gone away. But this is a, a pretty broken up piece of quartz, brecciated quartz. Uh, I hope I'm hoping that it uh, had a lot of gold bearing solution in it to where it'll have high high quality gold. Got our first sample on the microscope. We're going to kind of peek around and see what we can see. Uh, that microscope really isn't that good. So we just ground up the rock anyway. 
port it through our sieve. You want to classify this stuff. You don't want big chunks in there if you can help it. The finer the better. And once you're done running the sieve, or running the dirt through the sieve, you want to check and make sure that there's no nuggets in there. I mean, heaven forbid you throw away a, a two gram nugget just because you were sifting dirt. So we're going to take this sample out to our panning area and we're going to pan off the uh, the muds off of it. We're going to try and keep all the, the heavies in here. A lot of that black stuff that you see around on the screen, that's actually dirt on the inside of my camera lens. i got to take that thing apart and clean it. It looks terrible. But we're just going to gently pan this. We're gonna, first we're going to take off the mud. All the real light stuff. And then we're going to pan it down some, try and get some of the, the light materials off, some of the light quartz. Don't want to get too aggressive because this gold that we have up here is fine, fine gold, micro fine gold. So we'll probably wind up having to leach our, uh, our ore that we get. And we'll probably be using Eco Gold X to do that. We have to learn about it and get a system set up for it. Now we're going to pour this off into our beaker and start playing chemistry with it. Now since we're using some pretty nasty acids, got to put on your hand condoms. Yeah, you don't want to get any nasty stuff on your hands. I have some pre-made chlorauric acid here. I'm going to use it to test out my new Stannis Chloride batch that I just mixed up. This is uh, not denoxed, so it does have excess nitric acid in it. So I'm going to put a little bit of urea in the spoon on the left. That should denox the solution. If you have excess nitric acid in the solution that you're going to test with Stannis Chloride, it could give you invalid or incorrect results. So we're going to denox the one on the left and run the one on the right straight up and see if there's a difference. Being that there is gold, the uh, they should both test positive. They should turn purple or dark color. Okay, the one with nitric acid has turned purple. It tests positive, but uh, being that it has excess nitric in it, it could be an invalid response. And the denoxed one on the left tests positive for gold, so yes there is gold in that solution, which I knew there was because I was the one that mixed the uh, muriatic and nitric acid together and dissolved a bead of gold in it. Okay, the first acid treatment we're going to give this is a nitric acid wash. We're just going to put in some nitric acid, cook it for a while, kind of clean things up a little bit. Being that it's only nitric acid, it should not absorb the gold, so there's no worry there. But we do want to get rid of as much crud as we can. So here's the sample after cleaning it. See how clean the quartz is now and we got stuff separated out nice. I still see some sulfides floating around but oh well. So we've got it back on the heat with aqua regia. You see the uh, little bubbles indicate there's a chemical reaction going on. If you had big bubbles that would indicate that you got it too hot and it's boiling. A few minutes later the bubbles have subsided indicating our reaction is complete. Now I've put two samples of the same solution into each of these two spoons. We're going to process them and see how they work out. The one on the left, we're going to denox using urea. That stuff there. The other one we're going to leave as it is. I don't know if there's too much nitric acid in it or not, but uh, yeah, we'll see what kind of result we get. 
it's always nice to run a baseline along with your true sample so you get some idea of what's going on so the denox solution on the left shows no gold however the solution on the right which still has uh, nitric acid in it shows a slight tint well, there it goes it's firing off so it shows that there is a little bit of gold but uh, I believe the denox solution first here's the next rock we're going to take a sample of see right here this the split here it has some uh, nice brown coloration to it so I'm going to chip off this rock and uh, see what's behind that I believe there's probably going to be more of this dark brown color if there is that should be the gold bearing area and there we have nice dark brown on both sides get another sample too we'll chisel off this piece here and it too has dark brown on both sides good indicator I'm going to look at this one under the microscope see if we can see any gold nodules this microscope isn't very good it doesn't have a good focal length so you focus on one thing and whatever is directly next to it's going to be fuzzy or you know, not not right but uh, what you're looking for is little gold specks like maybe those there and I see a little nodule in the in the center there But this is just basically a precursory uh, look to see if we have anything. Just to kill my own uh, curiosity. Yeah, this looks like a piece right here. Maybe a small shard on that piece of quartz. Uh, we'll keep poking around. Oh, here's something that looks interesting. Let's get it focused in here. Yeah, that it's rounded. It's the right color. Looks like gold. So we'll take that as a definite possibility of a maybe. And of course, it's back to grinding. Got to get this thing mashed down to a fine powder. And then we uh, classify it, screen it, get out of the, get out all the chunkies. Now I found that tapping the screen works a little bit better than shaking it. Shaking it you get stuff falling out the sides. But this is our powdered sample. Pretty good pretty good powder there. I'm gonna pour it off into this little beaker. Don't want to use too big of a beaker because then by the time you get it flooded with acid you've used three times more than you need to. And speaking of acid, it's time to put on the hand condoms again. Now we're going to pan this down again, or at least pan off the silt. Get the fine dirt out of there. Put a little squirt of jet dry in there as a surfactant to keep any gold from floating. And mix it around a little bit can't be too careful with this microfine gold it'll it'll float on the water and it's off to panning I'll shake it up some get the mud suspended let the heavy settle 
then we'll tip it and drain off our, our silty mud stuff. You lightly pan it. You don't want to pan out your uh, your gold. Super fine gold. You don't want to float it out. I'd rather not even pan it, but you kind of have to. If you don't get that silt out, then your acid solution turns into a, a crusty lump of mud and it's hard to work with. Alright, back into the shop. We're going to wash all this, uh, all this panning into a uh, nice little beaker here again don't want to miss anything make sure you rinse down the whole pan and we'll do a couple of water rinses just to make sure we uh, got all the the silt out that looks pretty clean pour the excess water off into this uh, waste beaker And we'll get it ready to uh, to boil. First, we're going to add our muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid. I'm going to put in about 30 milliliters. Not that it really matters. You just want to make sure that it covers up the uh, covers up the sample. going to put that on to boil for a little bit get it warmed up these reactions work a lot better with warmed acid it's very slow and sometimes even impossible to get a get a good uh, cleaning or extraction with cold acids now we're going to put our nitric acid in we don't have a lot of gold so we don't need a lot of nitric if we put in too much we're just going to have to kill it off and denox the solution and uh, use up a lot of urea or sulfamic acid to denox the solution. So we put it in for, to cook and uh, put down our blast shield just in case something happens. Time for a drink. Yeah, soda, soda, uh, soda. Ah, this stuff's gone flat. Now, like I said, you can denox with urea or sulfamic acid. Uh, either one. They seem to both do the trick, however urea does have the side effect of creating urea nitrate or nitrate of urea which is a precursor to a high explosive. So you gotta be careful with it. So we're taking our solution, putting it in two spoons. We're gonna denox one side with urea. This time we're gonna denox the right side. I don't know why, it's just where I reached. No reason, no rhyme. And now we're going to add our stannous chloride and see if we got any gold. Start off with just one drop in each one. Well, the, the non-denoxed one is already indicating there's something there. But that's probably a false indication. We're putting in the same number of drops in either one. So everything is, is even. See the denoxed side shows no gold. While the undenoxed or the side containing nitric acid uh, shows a, a small amount. So of course I'm going to go with the denox side. Now we're going to run a test here. We're going to take a bit of this sample in each spoon. And we're going to denox one side sulfamic acid and the other side with urea. The tall beaker is a sulfamic acid solution 
and the short beaker is the urea solution. So first we'll put in the urea. That's on the left side. And now we'll put in the sulfamic acid solution and mix that in with the, uh, the right side. See what kind of difference we get here. Well, the only thing I can see is that the urea dosed side is a little bit lighter in color. Now we need to add our stannous chloride and see what results we get. Alright, we're going to add the same amount of stannous chloride. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's five drops in each spoon. Now let's see what the results are. We give it a little bit of a stir. And that shows a big negative. And that shows a big negative. So that shows both urea and sulfamic acid will neutralize the excess nitric acid. Now on to our next sample. We're going to crush this up and I find that crushing ore is a lot easier when you do it to march music. <laughs> enough fun. Alright, now it's time to get back to work. We're going to screen this one out, get all of our rough chunkies out of the way. And remember, once you get done with this, always check the basket and make sure there's no nuggets in there. I don't see any nuggets, do you? Yeah, screw it. Okay, moving on. We're going to put this uh, powder into a beaker. And we're going to go directly to our muriatic acid. We're not going to waste any time. All right, we're going to put about 30 milliliters in here. All right, 40. Close enough. Just want to cover the sample, make sure you've got enough for the reaction to go. All right, we're going to put this in here to cook pre-warm the solution before we put the nitric in. That's looking tasty already. It's looking dirty. We'll stir it up and let it sit for a little bit more. Got to keep this stuff well stirred and you know to keep the reaction going. You don't want the stuff on the bottom settling out and being covered. Now we're going to uh, do something special here. We're going to take four samples. The first sample is going to be on the left will just be the muriatic acid wash. The second sample will be the muriatic acid and nitric or aqua regia, but it won't be denoxed. The third sample will be denoxed with urea. The fourth sample on the far right will be denoxed with sulfamic acid and we shall see what our results are. Here's our sulfamic acid uh, solution and our urea solution. Now 
Uh, here's our boiled rock solution. Uh, we've got it separated out into four beakers here, or four test tubes. And we're going to start off by denoxing the urea sample. Put some urea into the solution. Let it sit for a bit. Then we're going to denox the sulfamic acid solution with the sulfamic acid, of course. Put about the same amount in as the urea. We want to keep this fair. And the denox solution, we're just going to give it our best wishes and see what it does. And the hydrochloric only solution on the far left, no, we don't expect him to do much at all. So these are our three samples from the boiled rock solution. And we're going to start off with the non-denoxed sample. We're going to add our stannous chloride test solution to it and see what we get. Well, we see some precipitate. Yeah, it's turned purple. It's telling us there's gold there. Now, whether or not we can trust it is a different story. We're going to try the urea neutralized solution. Put our stannous chloride in there and see what we get. Well, we actually do get a color change. That's an indication of some gold. And the sulfamic acid neutralized solution. We'll put our stannous chloride test solution in there. And wow, did you see that turn? That's a dark purple there. That's telling me that there's a lot of gold. So which one do you think I should believe? I'll believe them all. I need the gold. Well, that'll about do it for today. Hope I didn't bore you with too much information. So, come this spring, you know where I'll be. Up hammering on that vein. See ya!